Let's talk about equalizers in VoiceMeter and OBS Studio. VoiceMeter has equalizers built right in, but to use one in OBS, you'll need a plugin. There's a link in the description below to the one I'm using. You'll have to work out installation yourself. Now let's dive headfirst into the deep end and discuss VoiceMeter's equalizers. The main and auxiliary inputs each have simple three-band equalizers. But we're here to talk about equalizers that are available for each of the outputs of your master section. Now, left-clicking this EQ button turns it on or off. Right-clicking opens up the interface. It may look intimidating, but we're going to break it down so it's easily digestible. The top section contains controls, while the bottom section is a visual representation of changes made by those controls. The top section has six columns that look pretty much identical, each with three knobs or dials. That makes this a six-band equalizer. The bottom section has a bright line and some numbers along the bottom and the left. In each band of the top section, the top knob selects the frequency you want to modify. Those are measured in hertz, or HZ. These are the numbers along the bottom. It represents the typical range of human hearing, from low, deep sounds to high-pitched sounds and everything in between. Now, the middle knob controls the amplitude, or strength, of the selected frequency, and that's measured in decibels, or dB. These are the numbers up and down the left-hand side. Now, just so you know, clicking this flat button up here will immediately reset everything to the default position that you see here. There will be no way to undo that. The A and B buttons are independent profiles or presets that you can save and switch between. Finally, just make sure that this top button here is the one that's always selected. All of these others are really for advanced uses and advanced users. Now, in case you didn't know, the human voice, for the most part, exists between the 300 and 100 hertz range of the frequency spectrum. So if you're using the equalizer exclusively for your vocal mic, the changes you'll be making will likely be in or near this range. Now, let's increase the amplitude of the 200 hertz frequency by about 9 decibels. You're going to see that this bright line has suddenly got a curve in it. That's because changes made to any one frequency also affect nearby frequencies along this curve to a greater and then lesser extent. When using any graphic equalizer. This visual representation is how changes affect neighboring frequencies. Now, this equalizer in voice meter is more than a graphic equalizer. It's a parametric equalizer. And that brings us to the third knob, which is labeled Q. Q stands for quotient of change, even though you may hear it called other things. It allows you to narrow or widen the area of effect for the frequency that you've selected, giving you surgical precision over frequency adjustment. Now, most streamers will never need to use this, and content producers either. But I will show you a real-world example of how and why I use it. My headphones happen to produce just a tiny bit of sibilance at a very specific frequency range. <laughs> and I've just realized that at some point I erased it. That's okay, that's okay. I remember that it was, yep, yeah, about 15,000 hertz. And what we do to compensate for this sibilance is drop the decibels all the way down to the floor, in this case negative 12, 
And then we want to increase the quotient of change so it narrows the area of effect for that frequency. I'm going to pull this up to, I don't know, close to 40 if I can. Let's get it all the way up. I think that, yeah, that's good. So now it's just very narrowly affecting this. And I will no longer hear that sibilance if it occurs. So there's a real world example of why you might want to use one of those. Now that you understand how the parametric equalizer works and why you may or may not need its advanced features, let's look at the other equalizer that's packaged with voice meter. If you go up to menu and then come down to run other voice meter tools, you can select run 15 band graphic EQ. And that's going to open up this equalizer. <clears throat> which might look familiar to you because it's the kind of thing that you see in most other programs. Now, though it looks a little bit different, it's nothing we haven't already seen, but this one controls 15 different frequencies, making it a 15-band graphic equalizer, but it's not parametric. <clears throat> the numbers along the top and the bottom still represent our frequencies. On the left, still got our decibels but each band is a preset frequency. So the sliders affect the amplitude of that frequency, just like the middle knob did in the parametric version. Now, if we move the 250 Hertz slider up, there is still an invisible curve. You remember the curve from the parametric one? Well, that's still there, even though you can't see it. It's affecting the neighboring frequencies. So keep that in mind when making your adjustments. And in case you were wondering, and you should be, these buttons up here all represent the A1, A2, A3, and B1 and B2 outputs. So this equalizer can only affect one of your outputs at any given time. So now that we know how all equalizers work, let's look at the plugin for OBS. And we're going to talk about why you might want to use it or why you may never need it. Once you've got it installed, you need to choose a source in your audio mixer. Click the gear icon and select filters. Now, what you've installed is a VST 2.x plugin. So when you come down here and click the plus symbol, you're going to choose VST 2.x plugin. Name it whatever you want. I am going to disable it so that it is not affecting my microphone while I'm doing this recording. And then from the drop down over here, you'll want to select Marvel GEQ. Then click Open Plugin Interface and voila. Now mine's going to look a little different than yours. Number one, I'm using version 1.7, which is a little old. Uh, I have not updated it lately. And number two, because you can customize the user interface within an inch of its life. So mine's probably going to look different than yours. Uh, though some of the UI elements may be different, everything else here is exactly the same. This is just like that 15 band graphic equalizer we just saw. Only this one handles 16 bands. You can have up to four groups or presets that you can switch between. And in case you're wondering what underlay is, it's exactly that. It's so that you can see one of these other groups as an underlay of your selected group. You can also have uh, a ton of presets. You can save these out as different banks with presets. There are factory installed ones that you can go for, or you can create your own and name it whatever you want. It gives you lots of options. So now that you know the difference, between graphic parametric equalizers and you know how to use them, whether or not you need this OBS plugin really depends on your situation. Now, there could be any number of reasons why you might want to bypass voice meter and bring a signal directly into OBS. And if that signal could benefit from equalization, then you're going to want to have this EQ or one similar. Now, if you feel confident enough to snobbily correct your friends about their misunderstanding of equalizers, 
Do me a favor, click that like button, subscribe to the channel for more content, and take care, everybody.